9. And beheld to the thrones were cast down. Right. And the ancient of days did sit. Right. Whose garment. Ancient of days. Now we're going to read is that verse. We're going to read the whole thing. Now it said the ancient of days did sit. Why well, see the ancient of days? Because he's the most high. is more ancient than time itself. Before there was a such a thing as time, the most high was there. Yeah. Before there's ever been a recording of time, the most high was there. Before there was anything called space. Meaning any type of space. Not even, I'm, not even, I'm not even talking about the, the space itself. Before there was anything called space, before anything was called time, before there was dimensions, before there was anything, the Most High was there. Which that coincides with what we just read. Go on. Whose garment was white as snow. So the Most High had a white garment on. And the thrones were cast down, meaning the end of all the kingdoms on the earth. Go on. And the hair of his head, like the pure wool. Like the hair on my head, like the hair on his, like the hair on the brother head. So the Most High had pure woolly hair. Come on, man. You can't get around that. The Most High hair was pure woolly, and the son looked just like the father. His hair was pure wool. And the only people that got woolly hair is the so-called Negroes on, the, in, in, um, in the, on this planet. I ain't talking about a, I'm not talking about a Jufro, the so-called Jufro. Go on. His throne was like the fiery flame and his will as burning fire. Right. Going into the charge with people like to call so-called UFOs. Now, um, I'll be as the last, oh, get Isaiah 43 and 13 too. 43 and 13. Yeah, and then get 41 and 4. In fact, 41 and 4 first, and then 43 and 13. So we're going to do it in that order. Isaiah 41 and 4. Right. Who have wrought and done it? Calling the generation from the beginning. I, the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am He. That's self explanatory. Now, 43. 43. And, and now, 13. 13. Isaiah 43 and 13. Right. Yea, before the day was, I am He. Before the day was, I am He, meaning before there was anything called day, the Most High was there. It tells you that in Genesis chapter 1. Right? So, before the day was I am he, meaning before there was anything called time. Yep. Before there was even, before there was time to measure, the most high was already there. Before there was a sun to rise and a moon to rise to signify the light from, night from the um, day, the most high was already there. Come on. Right. And there is none that can deliver it out of my hand. I will work and who should let it. That was the last in that verse? Yeah, that's on that. That's gonna be the last scripture we're gonna bring out, but I got a couple more pages I wanna go into. How much time we we doing so far? Over a half hour. Over a half? Yeah. Uh, like 35 probably. Yeah, it's a spirit. But you know I'm gonna do this part quick. But it's alright because um we just gonna do other parts right after this. Lord willing. I'm gonna go to page two hundred and two. I thought this this part was gonna be quick, but that's a spirit. It had to go on. I'm just gonna read this part kinda quick. These couple pages. I'm reading just really highlighted parts. This is page 202, 203. This says argument 13. Argument 23, I'm sorry. Although their resemblances of the Indian rites and customs to those of the Hebrews might be pointed out not to seem tedious, I proceed to the last argument of the origin of the Indian Americans, which shall be from their own traditions, from the accounts of our English writers, and from the testimonies which the Spanish writers have given concerning the, prim the primitive inhabitants of Peru and Mexico. So the people living in Peru and Mexico had the same traditions as the people living in North America, so-called Indians living in North America. The Indian tradition says that their forefathers in very remote ages came from a far distant country. Zoom on this, brother. The Indian tradition says that their forefathers in very remote ages came from a far distant country where all the people were of one color. Because in the beginning, everybody was dark skin. Yeah. And that in process of time, they moved eastward to their present settlements. Because what happened when they was on this, when they was, when they came on this side of the world, what happened was they only they not only came to the, to the western side hemisphere of the world. Yeah, it says eastward, but they came to the western hemisphere of the world. But what happened was when they got to the side of the world, the tribes split up and went to certain lands. They was going in certain went into certain lands of this um or this hemisphere. So that's not a contradiction. Because somebody said, oh, that's a contradiction. No, it's not a contradiction, you idiot. So what if they was in the Eastern Hemisphere and it says they came eastward? They came, they came here to the Western Hemisphere. Obviously, they went west. But when they got to this side of the world, they split up, split up and went to different lands. And in this book, if I can find it, 
it tells you that um it tells you that it gives you more more on it it says our own indian tradition is literal and not allegorical and ought to be received because people who have been long separated from the rest of mankind must know their own traditions the best because the natives when they came to the side of the world they were separated from the rest of the whole world so who else gonna know the traditions as, um, as good as they do they are because they're those people our own Indian tradition is literal and not allegorical and ought to be received because people who have been long separated from the rest of mankind must know their own traditions the best and cannot be deceived in so material and frequently repeated event. What's the next page, um, 205 and 207. I'm really going to the highlighted parts. The old waste town of the Chickasaw lied to the west and southwest from where they have lived since the first time we opened a trade Help me jump down from there. Um, okay, here it is, because I wanted to deal with the name. I'm going to start from this page 206. The want of a friendly intercourse between our northern and southern Indians has in, high, has in length of time occasion, has in length of time occasioned some of the former and, and a little to corrupt or alter the name of the self-existent creator and preserver of the universe. So what this tells you is that over time, their traditions became corrupt and they altered the name of the Most High. Didn't we just read that? It just said it right there. It has in length of time occasioned some of the former a little to corrupt or to alter the name of the self-existent creator and preserver of the universe. That's what we read Jeremiah 17 and 4. As they repeated in their religious invo invocations. Now, this, now I'm going to read the top part of it because I didn't read the top part. It says, Ocosta tells us that though the Mexicans have no proper name for the Most High, yet they allow supreme omnipotence and providence. His capacity was not su sufficient to discover the former, however, the latter agrees with the present religious opinion of the English American Indians of a universal divine wisdom and government, which they do have a name for the Most High. We're going to read it right now. It says, as they repeat it in their religious invocations, yo he ah ah, because over time they forgot the name. That's why I said he had no name. Over time they forgot the name, but some of them still knew the name. It says, they, they, as they repeat it in their religious invocations, yo he ah ah. So over time, they forgot the name. They forgot the name so, some over time. That's why the, the natives in North America called them yo he wa, but here they called them yo he ah ah, or yo he ah. So over time, they forgot the name, and, and the name became altered throughout the course of history. But with what show of truth consistent with the above concession, can the culture describe the Mexicans as offering human sacrifices also to devils and, greed, and greedily feasting on the victims? Now, why did he say that? Because you, the Spaniards, which you're going to hit in another show, the Spaniards was lying. Lied about many of the things that the natives on this side of the world did. They lied about a lot of them things, which you're going to get in this book too, when it, um, if the spirit permits. Jump further down. It says, Lopez de Gamora tells us that the Mexicans were so devout as to offer to the sun and, and earth a small quantity of every kind of meat or drink before any of the vessels tasted it. And they, they offered it to the Most High, not to the sun or to the earth. And that they sacrificed part of their corn, fruits, etc. in like manner. Otherwise, they were deemed haters of and contemned by their gods. Well, let me read that again. Lopez de Gamora tells us that the Mexicans were so devout as to offer to the sun and earth a small quantity of every kind of meat and drink before any of, the, of themselves tasted it, and, they, and that they sacrificed part of their corn, fruits, etc., in like manner otherwise, they were deemed haters and contemned by their gods. So over time, they started um, worshiping other gods, which that was going on in the ancient world. When they worshiped other gods in the ancient world, what happened? The Mosai turned against them. That's why I said, um, that's why I said that. Is not this a confused Spanish picture of the Jewish daily sacrifice of the first fruit offering? That's the offerings of the first fruits, which we're going to get that too in another show. Lord willing, as formerly observed, and which, as, as we have seen, are now offered up by the northern Indians to the bountiful giver, the supreme Holy Spirit of fire, whom they invoke in the most sacred and awful song, Yohewa, and loudly ascribe him, hallelujah, for his continued goodness to them. And these will be the last two parts, and he's going to jump to the next topic. Lord willing. Page 212. Had the former been endued, endued with a proper capacity and given a suitable attention to the Indian general law of purity, he would probably have described them singing. I'm reading from the top so you can get a better understanding. Lyrius 